for your your guests after Thursday? I guess that came for the Salem Saints. Oh, they they love music. I wish they'd come back. Well, we are, so this was our, our pilot one, um, but uh, we we're just meeting today about a bunch of things. The plan is through the end of the year, we're going to do those types of things the second and the fourth Thursday so of, twice a month. of every month. Okay, cool. I will get that on the website. Um, I'm sure Emily will be in touch about all of that. Uh, awesome. But the, uh, now we have four weeks off. Because Emily's going to be gone, I'm going to be gone, but then we're going to start second, fourth Sunday of every month, uh, trying to bring in as many outside people as possible. So they will know it will probably be much the same. Uh, it might be more requests, uh, simply because instead of trying to do all of the music for a month, we'll do the music for two weeks. Uh, and then we'll try and do some other special stuff, but that will all be down the road. So she has returned. Okay. Should I grab my ukulele or my guitar? I would grab your guitar. We'll talk about ukulele and guitar, but ukulele is American. That means that you have to talk about it like this. <laughs> yes. It's a baritone ukulele. So welcome everybody to our first music class. Uh, thank you for being here. Nancy is, you probably heard this, Nancy is basically like kind of co-teached this with me, simply because she has a, a few more years of experience with the guitar than I do. Um, so that that will be very, very handy, but I'm still gonna, I'm gonna lead it. And it's gonna be, you know, really structured around what is it that, that you guys want, or where are you at? So to that end, I will simply ask you both the question, this is a two-parter, of where are, your, where are you at either with your understanding of music from a making it standpoint, and what are your either desires or expectations from us uh, with regards to learning guitar? I think Debbie has a, a like you to go first. <laughs> uh, well, I have some basic musical knowledge. It's pretty good. Meaning like reading music or? Yeah, I, you know, I can follow music to sing. Okay. And uh, I, I understand what sharps and flats mean, but I'm not able to sign keys. Sure. I once took some guitar lessons, but they were classical. Mm -hmm. He was teaching how to play melody. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, at this stage of life, I'm kind of turned off from chord a bit. Sure. Cool. Great. Uh, do you want to accompany your wife? <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> Date night. <laughs> yeah. All right, honey, I've learned some 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 t uh, tabs for you. Mm -hmm. That's either a fun date night or a fun divorce night. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, if she gets too nasty, I'll make her play her French horn. Oh, play okay, <laughs> make everyone feel better. <laughs> well, I did all the music stuff in high school, all the choirs and orchestras and all that kind of stuff, so I knew music pretty well. I also took the requisite piano lessons from third grade on for seven and eight years. And I've got a file board filled with my grandfather's, some of my grandfather's music. church and I always thought maybe one day I'd play that music. It's it would be a 
shock is this poor thing. <laughs> 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 um, I think this was given to me as a gift in high school or college maybe, and that was in the days of John Denver and the most I could say. Um, that was it. That was the most I could ever do was play the chords for some time. Which is not the easiest. It was, well, I don't even remember it. And well, I, I mean, also knew how to use the strings to tune. So, sure. But I, that's it. Okay. And now my kids like to open the case and plop. Ding, ding, dong, dong, ding. Yeah, they do that mm -hmm. with that in the piano. Absolutely. Do you want to share? I know I can read music, but I can't read music and play the guitar. I can work at playing things on the piano or singing them. Um, I can play some chords. Um, I know the top four strings for fingering for chords, because that's what the ukulele is, so I'm better at my ukulele. Mm -hmm. They are tuning strings. We'll, we'll get into that debate later. <laughs> we'll get there. Not confuse anyone yet. So I can, but I don't know anything about the lower two strings. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't like that it hurts my fingers. Yeah. Because my strings are really pokey. Um, and it would be nice to... Ready for me? Oh, can you sign something? Yes, I can. And I'm saved by the bell. Ah, uh, alright. Well, we'll come back to you. And I would like to be able to play songs and sing along whenever I feel like it. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, in terms of expectations, both for you and for our video, um, I want to make it really, really, really super abundantly clear that these classes can go in any direction as long as you communicate with me. So if you're not getting what you want or what you imagined out of the class, there's one really in easy solution. Tell me. You know, and we will redirect. Um, this isn't the same as like, you know, little kids lessons where kids just, you know, I don't want to do it period as opposed to, well, I'd like to do more of this. And the teacher says, oh, well, to be good for you, you've got to eat your spinach and <laughs> do this. We don't have to do that. Okay. So um, to me, the most important thing really, really is communication. And if, there, if you're ever questioning why are we doing something that isn't enjoyable or fun, ask me because I guarantee you I have a reason. Um, so to that end, um, I want to preface guitar just because I don't know how much either of you know about it. Vern, it might be really helpful for you to join one of the like read music classes. Um, it's... Uh, with guitar, it's kind of one of these things of like there are so many ways to interact with the guitar that don't necessarily necessitate necessitate reading music um, in the way that we like we do with the piano, which is really the basis of all Western music. But because there are a lot of interrelationships that will make wrapping your brain around it uh, tough, it is something I would recommend. Um, these are just generally online or something here specifically? Here. All year? We're having our first one here today at 1230 ah. for people who are just interested in reading music. Um, and as we move along, there will probably be different levels of that, um, simply because like some people have no clue, some people have, you know, a history of piano, and so um, it really does need to be have different levels. So I say that just as a preface, because once we start getting into how the guitar works and the theory and all of that, it is going to get confusing very quickly unless we try and keep it straight. Um, so, but uh, to first start, we, we want to talk about like the anatomy of the guitar just so we have to all have the same vocabulary, okay? And Nancy, if I have any words that you think are different, you tell me. Um, the first thing that I want to address particularly is like your fingers hurting. Okay, because mm -hmm. 
you have a nylon string or a classical guitar. You said you were getting one or just got one? I ordered one, it should be here in a couple of days, but it's uh, steel string. Steel string. So like, if the your fingers hurting are a thing, um, a nylon string is gonna be more comfortable, but the other part of it is, and this is really important to acknowledge, is how the guitar is set up by a guitar technician, okay? So oftentimes, you know, when you first buy a guitar, they might have what's called the action of the guitar, which is basically how high the strings are off of the frets. If the strings are really high off of the frets, everything is a balance. If the strings are really high, it means that you're less likely to have buzzes. I'm, I won't even try and make a buzz. It'll happen when I don't want it to. <laughs> um, but for instance, like an electric guitar, an electric guitar, you don't need um, a lot of tension or pressure to create an acoustic sound. So an electric guitar can have the strings really, really, really close to the frets, and it makes it very easy to learn chords, press the strings, okay? Because we don't have to have that tension, okay? On an acoustic guitar, we do have to have that. So the higher the action, the more you're gonna to have to push on those strings, the more tension against them, the more it's gonna hurt, okay? And especially the more that you do it up here close to the nut, okay? This right here is called the nut. Um, that was an N or a K? An N, but I don't know, maybe somewhere they used a K. Just so basically, and tell me if I go too fast or I get too deep. Basically, a guitar technician will change the height of this nut to affect the height of the strings. There is more to it, but it's basically that simple. Okay? So the closer you play down here, which is where we play most of the time, the more it's going to hurt. Because the more you have to push into this angle right here, and the more it's going to push back against you. So when you play up here, even though I have to, if you see, you have to see I move that string a further distance, much easier on my finger, okay? Uh, the last thing I'll say about this, just as, as a, a forewarning, it's probably gonna be natural that you're gonna overpress with your fingers. And you're gonna overpress with your fingers because your body has to learn, okay, how hard do I really have to press in order to make sure that those strings really are blocked off at the fret, okay? To start with, you're not gonna know that intuitively, so you're gonna overpress, which means your fingers are gonna hurt more. Now, no matter what you do, your fingers are gonna hurt because you have to build, build up talent. My recommendation, and we'll get down, we'll go down this road and you'll hear this from me again. My recommendation is saying, okay, I'm just going to do anything for five minutes a day. And the more that you do it every day, even if it's that little bit of time, you'll build up that callus with less pain, okay? If you sit there and try and play your guitar for 30 minutes and you don't play all the time like Nancy, I guarantee you your fingers are gonna hurt for days, okay? Any questions about all of that? Yes? I did want to make one slight mention about the difference between the nylon string and the steel string, and that is that traditionally the neck is just a little bit wider on a classical guitar than right. on a steel string guitar. And so when you go to build muscle memory, your strings are, you're, and you have to go back and forth between the two, you may have a little bit of a difference. So yeah, yeah. Just know that when, as you do that, that there is a little bit of difference. The strings are a little bit further apart. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that again for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay. okay when, could you restrict this guitar with some knives? You could, it's not advisable. Right. And here's the reason why, okay? Um, nylon strings guitar on the underside of, this is the soundboard, are not braced in the same way that a steel string guitar is braced. And it's because the tension on a steel string is so much higher in order to create a lot of volume, whereas if we were to do that with Debbie's guitar, it's 
going to naturally be quieter. So technically you can, but engineering wise, it's there's not a point to it. Okay. Um, but but well, but also to speak to what Nancy said, and this you're going to find this true of all instruments and everything. Debbie, would you mind handing me your guitar real quick? No, 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 I got it. So if you look at these two right here and you look at the neck right here, as Nancy was saying, you can see this is much wider, this is much narrower. Why? Okay? On steel strings, we tend to play more chords, you know, because it's more folky, it's more uh, accompanimental. And we're trying to, it's a, it's an instrument that goes with other instruments. On a classical guitar, think like back to lutes, or uh, I don't want to say mandolins, but classical guitars are more melodic instruments. So like when you were studying classical guitar, it's about melody. It's not about strumming chords. So widening the neck gives you more space to be able to have distinct um, uh, capabilities of your fingers of uh, playing specific pitches. So there is different techniques in how you will hold the guitar and how you will play it um, and what you would expect for it. That's a little bit beyond where we are right now. That being said, like when you get your guitar, if you got it from like Guitar Center or something like that, you can return it to get another one. Um, got it from lots, so that's probably not. Right. Um, like this is, anyways. The things to know ahead of time, simply because like what puts a lot of people off are pain and um, sound and being able to make an appropriate sound. A lot of people will start on a guitar that has been set up very poorly by a guitar technician. So it would be like asking somebody to play a piano where the keys don't work. And it's exactly the same thing. So like when you have your guitar, you bring it in, perfect thing is to have like me or Nancy look at the guitar and say like this guitar needs to go be set up by a technician or this guitar is in okay condition just get going does that make sense so it's just to know that ahead of time um, if you prefer the sound of a nylon guitar which personally I do even though I have a steel string um, or if you have very small hands so you have rather large hands, which is good. Yeah, I don't know the size. I think yours are about the same size as mine. Small. Small. So that is one of those considerations of, you know, guitar nerds will talk about like, well, what's the shape of the back of the neck? And how thick is the yeah. neck? And how wide is the neck? And like, we'll get really nerdy and people, you know, like. So like all of those things do matter, but they also don't. Okay, so at your at, at your level, they don't matter. Uh, or you won't have it be for comparison. Well, right. Like when I bought this guitar, I bought this before I knew how to play guitar, and I bought it, and I spent months and months and months looking just to try and learn those different things about what I didn't know to try and find something that would feel good to me once I did know what I was doing. But that's it's also kind of hard, you know, because you don't know what you don't. So I'm just trying to set yourselves up for if things aren't want, aren't feeling right, if they hurt, whatever, those are the types of things to communicate, okay? Because knowing why that is can be the difference between you wanting to continue and you not wanting to continue. Does that make sense? Question? No. The last part of this, which we'll bring up, is that guitars are six or more strings. Although there are some four string guitars that are that are custom simply for people who don't want to play six strings that prefer something like a ukulele. The ukulele is set up and again based off of the same type of thing. So for instance, we can learn, and I find it to be a great gateway, you can we can learn almost all of the same things that we would be doing on the guitar, on the ukulele, knowing that there's a little bit of translation, okay? And we'll get more in depth to that later. I'm just trying to give you a preview so that you can um, 
set your own expectations. Any questions? No, no. Nancy, any things that you're dying to say? Okay, great. So in terms of, I'm gonna real quickly go through anatomy of guitar. We have our tuners, we have the neck, we have the headstock, we have our nut, we have our bridge, okay? Our sound pole, our strings, the belly of the guitar. That's basically it. How do we? Well, not every guitar is going to have a belly. No, um, so, in terms of things that are really important that we might say something, oh, and frets. Right. Okay. Um, and then at some point, when we get more into theory, we'll talk about these guys right here. Mm -hmm which will help for transposition and knowing things quickly and being able to move up and down. Your guitar might not have any, or they're on the side oh, there. Is yeah. that what that is? Every guitar sets them up differently. Um, it's part of, you know, like, how is my guitar unique? Which is this? Hold up. I only have one. Really? So you look, on the, look on the other side. I don't actually. Three. Okay. This yeah. one has, this one has nothing. Yeah, nothing. Uh, again, like I said, they do follow a formula, but uh, we're not there yet. Questions? Nope. All right. Questions? You ran away, and then you came back. I had to sign it. Okay. Because I had a new printer today. So, uh, I don't have to run away again. If, if I were to, to use the word interval, in the context of music, do you know what I'm referring to? I need to be notes. Which one is that? It's sound distance. It's the distance of pitch between notes. So it's not the time between oh. notes. Right? That's what that's what I was like. Right. Exactly. Like I you're, you were close, but we have to be really specific about our words, okay? So like uh, we have, in music we have seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and octaves, okay? And then we also have half steps and whole steps, which are different ways of describing different relationships of the distance. And if you look on like our super highway of the neck and the fretboard, these are all the distance between notes. So that was what interval or what distance? A half step. So on the guitar, every fret is a half step. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try. Tell me if I go too deep into music nerd theory. Um, so the intervals between strings is what defines our tuning. Okay. On every string except for one, the distance between the, the, the interval distance between the two strings is a fourth. Right, five half steps. Okay, five half steps. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, which you see is our first dot. Okay? Excuse me, second dot. Um, it should be also. It should be your first dot on your ukulele, okay? And it should be a dot for you, Miss Dead over there, okay? And if you hear, once we have our guitar, guitar in tune, same pitch, same pitch. See, I'm playing same pitch, not the same pitch. Okay, so on a guitar, on a guitar, do we refer to this as the top string or this as the top uh, string? Yes, the eternal question. I call the top string the top string even though okay. it's lower. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to use pitch relation. The highest string, the highest pitched string, which is going to be the one closest to your feet, okay, that string and the string below it are this also a fourth apart. 
Okay, and this is also true on the ukulele. You hear they're the same pitch. Now, that second from the highest string and the string right above it, they're not five half steps, they are four half steps. Okay? So that's a Why? major third. Why is that one odd? You know what? I didn't design the guitar, so I have no, 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 no. clue. But it's one of the most annoying things. It's really, really hard to get that string to sing. I mean, there were hundreds of years of stringed instruments, and about how do we make the easiest translation between chords? I would say that probably if somebody at some point realized that, hey, if we just take this one string and knock it down a half step, it makes everything easier. Gotcha. So that's my guess. Okay. Any questions about that? No, oh, it could be used in tuning, right? Uh, can you be more specific in your question? Oh, if, if, if you use the. Uh, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. right. That is how we, we can. Uh, we'll get into the complexities of tuning. <laughs> Another time. Yes, yeah, one of my favorite <laughs> subject matters, which I can teach 30 minutes of theory in one class. Yes. Um, Pastor was using a online app for tuning. Is mm -hmm. that a good way to go? So, uh, to, to start with, yes. But let's. Uh, my guitar comes with one. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure what I was. It's like a note taker. To start with, yes. We will eventually talk about that more just because there are, like, there's a lot going into it. What I'd like you to know for now is that the top, the highest pitched four strings on a guitar are the same, with one caveat, as the four strings on a ukulele. So if we learn a chord on the ukulele, that chord will translate to a guitar if you only play the top four strings. Oops, man, time just goes so fast. I apologize. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna try and get to actually playing our instruments here quick. Okay. Uh, those top four strings are the same. So for instance, if if and when you work on things on the, the ukulele before you get your guitar, you can know that just like top four strings. Now they are tuned to different pitches, but the relationship, so the intervals between the notes are the same. So for instance, if I were to play a chord, um, let's say I play on a ukulele, just playing the third fret on the top, you're going to zap out of tune, so it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little wonky. Yeah. So uh, for now, this would be the same as on uh, a guitar. On a ukulele, the C chord is the third fret, all the other strings open. Okay. In order to play the exact same pitches on a guitar, I would actually have to move up and play something like this. Okay? Because the interval, so you see I've basically blocked off all of these strings, so it's the same as being the bottom, and then I've gone up one, two, three frets, played them all together, so it's another major chord. Okay, but of a different pitch name. So you're familiar with like A, B, C, D, E, F, G as the names of our pitches. Yeah? All of this still making sense? So far. Okay, great. So what I would love to do now, so that you have something to go home and play with, is we're going to teach you three chords on the guitar. Yes? We need to tune her guitar first. Well, are all three of yours in tune? Yes, they are. Okay, do you mind if we use the, let's do that for now? And then no, um, it doesn't have a little, it has cute little marks on it. That's okay. I, I think that'll be all right. There you go, the mark on the string. Steel string. <laughs> Nancy likes to do other tunings than standard. So while she's doing that, I'm going to give you one more preface, okay? There is no right or wrong way to hold a guitar. There are more popular and more uh, 
there are more popular ways, and there are ways, for instance, a classical guitar player is going to hold their guitar like this. You're never, and a jazz guitar player is going to hold their guitar like this, because jazz players are really more like classical players. But you know, like, you know, somebody sitting in a fire strumming, they're going to sit here like this. So we're not going to talk about, like, how we sit, how we hold at all right now, because that's a larger conversation. And the thing that I would like you to know is that the most important thing that you do is that you experiment and that you find what is comfortable for you. We'll give you some like general principles of like, don't hold your wrist like this because there's reasons why that's not going to work. You know, so principles of like keeping your elbow or stuff like that, all of those are like guidelines. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's your body. You have to figure out how it works. Okay? So, to that end, um, I found when I first started that the, the easiest thing for me was to have the guitar on my left leg up like this, okay? Where the neck was just slightly up like this. If you need to put your foot on a box to help that, see like that, you see how I'm resting my heel? It's just to get it elevated a little bit more. Okay, so uh, Deb, you might want to move your your guitar there, so that oh. you're not so that you're not hitting Do yourself. A little dance. So we're not going to go into theory. We're not going to go into song structure. All of that we will get there, but we are going to teach you the basic building blocks of a song, which is three chords. Okay, which is going to be what G D. Oh, G C and D. G C and D. All right, so. Uh, why don't you go ahead and teach us G? G. So starting from the high string going down, we're putting our third finger. We have to have names of each of the fingers. We have third finger on Bring the finger. third fret up here. And we're going to go all the way down to the lowest string. That's to say the top string. And we're going to put our second finger on the third fret also. And then we're going to take our first finger and put it on the second fret. So I will come around and help. Like this. All right. That is a G major chord. So we're going to have. I don't put. So I want to say one thing real quick. So if you'll look at me. I don't like to play this chord the way that Nancy plays it. I don't like to play it this way either. Because my fingers don't like to do that. So when I play this chord, I actually use my pinky here like this. It's, yeah. it's easier for me. It may not be easier for you, okay? The reason why I say this is what is important is the frets and the strings, not the fingers, okay? And this is gonna, this is gonna be hard. This is gonna be hard. So we want this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here, yeah? So go ahead and try and give it a strum. Close. But here, hold, hold on just one second. So, right now you're experiencing the first thing about holding the guitar and why it's super hard. Good! All right. In order to see what you are doing, you want to orient the guitar like this so you can see it. What does that force you to do with your arms? It forces you to go like this. Okay, the hard part with the guitar is getting your arm around so that you can reach. This is part of the reason why classical guitar players play with their guitar neck up like this. Because then you can look like this and hit, you see how I get my arm around it? Okay, and especially because classical guitars are wider in the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. So what I want you to do, Dan, Spread your legs a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So spread your legs just a little bit. Okay. Now, you're going to use your legs a little bit to hold the guitar right there. You're not going to worry about dropping it. That's okay. But now you can see your neck. Okay. So we're going to take finger right here. Yeah. I can't really see it. I have to turn it more. Okay, well you see when you do like this, 
The more upright you get it, the more your arm can come around. Once you start getting down, you have to then drop your shoulder to come up. So at this point, and I know that this is tough, this okay. is something you're just gonna have to experiment with. The more vertical that you keep it, okay, you can twist it like this, but if you start dropping and leaning, it's gonna cause issues for your arm, okay? So, right here, right here, and right there, okay? It's hard, it really is hard, okay? Now go ahead and just strum. There's your chord, okay? So, to start off with, pretty much one of the hardest things with the guitar is figuring out how to get your body to move and interact with it. So don't have the expectation that when you sit down to practice, that it's going to be, I'm making noise. The expectation is, okay, what process do I have to get to in order to figure out how to get those, okay? So if, I, if you're looking at me right here, you see, in order to see it, I'm moving my head forward, this all stays the same. My shoulders don't move. But I've got my elbow up, okay? And you do have to both relax and tension your hand at the same time. So you see, Deb, how your guitar, this is your guitar right now. If I'm looking at you, this is how you're holding your guitar. There is no way in the world that I can possibly reach around. So the more upright you get it, in fact, for you right now, I, I put it right here, right next to you. Okay? Look forward, look at it, see? That's where I gotta go? Okay. I got it there. And once you get, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not go too far too fast. So for instance, like, if this were ukulele, only the top four strings, I just played a chord, okay? These bottom two strings are the hard, 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 hard part of the guitar. Because it's hard to reach them, it's hard to see them, it's hard to think about them, all of that, okay? So right now, maybe where I would start, for instance, for you, okay, is top four strings. Okay? You can also do... So, I appreciate you, Nancy. I'm going to slightly improvise a little bit. Do it. Great. What I want you, to, what I want both of you to do for today, is we're going to only do the top four strings. So this will also work for your ukulele. Okay. That's just a standard. So the third fret on this highest string. Okay. Then you're going to take the second fret of that highest string, the third fret of the next highest string, and then the second fret of that next highest string. So you see how I've got middle finger, ring finger, index finger. Middle finger, ring finger, index finger. Next question. Okay. Never done this before. It's okay. It's so Middle finger, ring finger, index finger. But do you see? Uh, now I want you to hold your fingers there. Don't move. Okay. Don't move. So, right now the thing that you're going to have to work on this week, one is you're going to have to cut your fingernails. You're going to have to cut your fingernails. <laughs> is that in order to see it, you want to have it here. But that makes it impossible for your body to do what your brain is saying and what your eyes say, I need to do this. So you are just going to have to experiment and play around on your own of like, do I have to hold the good part down here? Do I have to hold it up here? Do I have to twist it? Do I have to like, all do of that kind of stuff. Do mm -hmm. I have to do acrobatics? Acrobatics? Do you have to play with your feet? Um, yeah, I'll have it. Just yeah. the other. Well, it, well, and you want to know why? Let me tell 
let's, so you're holding the guitar, you see how it's at this angle like this, makes it easier to see? If you look at anybody who plays the guitar, like that. Put the, because now all of a sudden you can reach further. Put okay. the thing on your right leg, the whole system on the right leg. Right. There you go. Okay. So this may be more, but even yeah. still, if you, even still, if you look at the angle right here of your guitar, you see how it's at an angle as opposed to straight up and down. Yeah, you're doing a classical guitar. This, like. this allows you to get around farther. But here's the, here's the thing. Okay, I want you to hear me really clearly on this. Okay, getting your hand to stretch is hard and will take time. So expecting yourself to be able to play chords immediately, not reasonable. Especially like. Uh, the first chord that she taught you, which in some ways is an easy chord, and in some ways it's a hard chord. It's important that it's common. It's, that's, that's true. The reason why it's a hard chord is that you have to reach with a finger all the way across the fretboard. Okay? So it will take time just to even get your hand to stretch that far. There are other parts that go with it. For instance, the guitar is super angled right now, which means that you would have to have seven foot arm to reach around. No, 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 no. If you do this, all of a sudden, now you can reach. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I do this, all of a sudden, oh, you see how your wrist gets in the way. Yeah? Does that make sense? Questions about this? So what is it, what is the, one second, what is the central point that I'm trying to make to you right now? Uh, emphasizing on you have to find it. You have to experiment with it. You need to look at yourself in the mirror. You need to have somebody else look at you. Ask yourself the question, why can't I reach? These are the types of things that after you spend some time trying to find that answer, then somebody like Nancy or myself can say, okay, what did you, what did you discover? What was your experience? Here's the thing that's going to help. Okay? Do you just need to do practice stretching your fingers 10 times a day? Is it that you need to hold the guitar in a different manner? Is it that you shouldn't be playing on a full size guitar? You should actually be playing on a three quarter size guitar. Is it that maybe we should start playing on a ukulele and then graduate to a guitar once we already know how to move our fingers to some? You know, only you know what your level of frustration is. Because if you've never played guitar before, and you're trying to play on an acoustic guitar like this, or on a, a, a classical guitar with a wide neck, it's going to be hard, period. It's going to be hard. But good for your brain. But good for your brain. How difficult is it to learn to play steel guitar Okay, so that's a that's a, a, a different thing altogether um, because in effect you're taking like um, a socket and playing slide guitar. I'm not an expert in that. In terms of that, I would say is more about your knowledge of theory than it is about the physical capability of playing. I'm just going to add, in addition, excuse me, the uh, Hawaiian uh, styles, I know the slack key guitar play, um, they're usually playing with alternate tuning, often in a, in a C based uh, tuning. And um, so your, your chord formations will be slightly different. And that's why I'm saying it's more based in your knowledge yeah, of theory. You want to be switching back and forth. Right. Not, yeah, not when you're starting. It, that's, it, that's, a, that's an advanced sort of thing. It, it's physically easier to do, but you could. It doesn't have the flexibility. And it's when we think of playing guitar, it, in my opinion, has almost no bearing on what we're doing here. Right. Okay. Um, so the other thing I was going to add earlier, when we were talking about all this wonderful thing, is that, that the, your your finger really should be down from the top rather than from the side. Guitar. And that's when you're supposed to be into your finger. Yeah. And 
that's to avoid, uh, you know, causing difficulty by hitting this string and having it inadvertently dead in this right. string. It really want to come down, and that's why the short fingernail is kind of slow. Right. We will eventually get there more. Right now, the big lesson that I want you to hear is that, like, the way that you hold the guitar, the position, the angle, all of that will impact your ability to either be successful or not be successful. Um, what I would suggest in terms of if you want to practice is again, if you'll hold on one second, Nancy, is third fret, top four strings, and then second fret, third fret, second fret. D major. D major. So that gives you two chords. One five one, which any theory theory teacher will tell you tell you is the basis for all music. Okay. So what I want you. To, hold on one second, everyone. Let's. The the one thing I want to try and do is have all com information come from the same source, so we don't get muckety muckety muck the playing telephone. Okay. So starting from your highest string, your first chord, third fret. Everybody play that. Four strings. Four strings. Just the top four strings. Okay. This is why we say this is why we say strings versus frets. Okay? This is important. So that's your first chord. Top four strings. That's it. All right, now your second chord, starting from the highest string, is going to be second fret, the next string, third fret, the next string, second fret, and then no frets. Okay? So second fret with your middle finger, third fret with your ring finger. Yeah, that's it. You were doing right. Okay. Deb, what may be the best for you? So close, but no banana. And this is where your fingernails are getting in the way. So you're going too far over, right there. Okay. Right, and that's so what Nancy's talking about is you have to come down straight, which is why the fingernails are in the way. Okay. So this one's got to be even closer over here. Nope. Even further, right there. Then, so this, what you're experiencing right now is part of this is building strength to keep those fingers rounded, okay? So, get this one first. This one first, boom, okay? Yeah, then that one, and then that one. Okay, go ahead and try it. There you go. Now the practice is that you see how long it took just to get the fingers in the right position to play the chord. That's the practice. Exactly. So knowing that you see how this knuckle is broken right there, you've got to practice, don't break the knuckle. And that's again where the fingernails. Okay, so Deb, go ahead real quick, then we got to stop. So that needs to be your middle finger. Middle finger, ring finger, yeah, right there. Now the reason why you're having a hard time is you're tilting yeah, the guitar. Yeah. I know, so this, is, this is why I'm saying you might want to practice in front of a mirror. Okay. Because you, what you're reinforcing right now is muscle memory that will get in your way, okay? So that's what I'm saying, it's hard. So, da-da, da-da. And you see how all of those knuckles are curved, and I'm going straight down into the fretboard. Second fret. Here's what we need to do. Vern, I'm leaving you on your own. Stop looking. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm going to help. I'm going to arrange your fingers so you can feel it. Okay. So, all right. We've got second, no, 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 second fret, okay? Relax, 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 relax. If you're all tightened up, you cannot do it, relax. 
So let go, relax. There you go. I'm gonna move you. I'm gonna move you. Second fret. Okay. Now. Third fret. Okay. Then second fret. Okay. Go ahead and play those top four strings. That's your chord. Okay? So we're gonna do this one. Let go. You see how tight you're holding? This is what I was talking about at the beginning. It's naturally that you're going to clamp down and your fingers are going to hurt. Eventually, we don't want that. So again, trying to get our guitar in that straight up and down. Yeah? Okay? Now what I would recommend is lean. Lean. Okay? Yeah, there you go. Now, if you want to watch along, you can look at what I'm trying to do with your fingers. Okay? Second fret. Relax, 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 relax. Third fret. Relax, 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 relax. Okay? Second fret. No, no, relax. You see, as soon as you tighten up, it becomes impossible. Relax. I can't even get my finger out. You're squeezing me to death. So here's the thing. Here's the, here's, here's the last bit of wisdom I'm going to give you today. And this is the most expensive and best piece of wisdom that you're going to receive all week. Okay? If you are tense, period, you will get things accomplished faster and send yourself in the wrong direction faster. The most important thing that you can do is not only in terms of your actual physical fingers, but your emotions. The most important thing that you can do is relax at every moment. Because if you can't do it relaxed, you're not actually building what you need to build. So if starting from today you learn everything trying to relax, you in the long run will progress exponentially faster. But in the short term, if you try and force it to happen, it will happen faster in the short term, and you will be shooting yourself in the foot in the long term. Okay? This is true of piano, this is true of guitar, this is true of anything that has to do with music. We want to be okay with building the strong foundation first, which is building everything, everything upon relaxation. And it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And in my experience, nobody teaches music this way. Because they want the result first, as opposed to recognizing, we've got to figure out how your body works. We've got to figure out how your brain works. Does this kind of make sense? So, as a teacher, if I had all the time in the world, which I don't. For instance, with you, I would say, let's focus on getting one string at a time. Instead of trying to get four, I would say, let's try and get one finger to one string. Okay? For you, I would focus on, okay, let's, how do we get our finger curved onto every different string? As you mentioned, I noticed how much trouble the nail right. Yeah, absolutely. And these are the things like, you 100% will fail. You will, and it's only by failing 500 times that you're gonna figure out what you have to do to do it right. And so, from that standpoint, and you're gonna hear me say this on and on and on and on throughout, there will be certain signposts and certain things that we want to say, these have to be there. If we feel like we got it right, but one of those is not there, guess what? didn't get it. So the things to focus on right now are, are my fingers going straight down? Am I relaxed? And do I have my guitar in a position that allows me to move wherever I want to? Because if you learn, starting right now, like this, just so that you can see it, again, you're going to get it to happen a lot faster. In the long run, you are absolutely killing yourself. So if we have to find a mirror, we find a mirror. 
if we have to have somebody else set our finger for us, if we have to look at it, move it, set it, and just hold it there until we memorize what that feels like, and then say, okay, I can feel that's the second, that's the third. So I can do it without looking. Whatever we have to do, that's your job when you go and practice is to see what works, what doesn't work, to be able to come back and say, I tried these things, I tried that. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Any comment about picks? We don't need them yet. If you want it, great, but like in the realm of how much it matters, not at all for a while. For the record, I really have, really. Um, but like choosing a pick, or picking stuff like that's a whole different other theory. I, there will come a time where there's absolutely a lot there, but that time is not now. Um, I just want to ask you for picking up visual notes. I I don't find that to be true, huh? but as I will say, everybody is different. So that's not something. If I were to tell you what to focus on in terms of trying to solve problems, that's not. I, I would not classify that as something. To I just wanted to add one thing to, to your point about the relaxation thing. I, uh, I actually took two lessons, finally, when I started playing for like 35 years with a fellow by the name of Al Pettyway, who was a world-renowned, fantastic, super awesome guitar player. And one of the things he had me do, without any thinking, knowing about what I had done or anything, was he wanted me to sit here and focus on any one note or any one finger, but just how much tension do you need to put down on a string before it sounds? Okay, it sounds terrible, right? All of a sudden it starts sounding good. And the idea is that you learn how much pressure you're putting down, and the idea is you want to use as little pressure as possible to get that note to sound. And that means you do have to be very Last tip, I know, I'm full of tips. Yep. The easiest way in the world to relax a muscle, in fact, it's by definition has to happen, move it. So if you're moving your finger like this, if you're moving your finger like this, it cannot be locked in tension. It has to be relaxed in order to move, okay? If I need all of my joints to move, moving it is the easiest way that I'm going to get it to relax. Rather than thinking, relax, relax, I want you to relax, I can't. <laughs> move it. Okay? So if you find yourself getting tight, immediately stop. Shake, move it out, and try it again. If you get one string, great. If you get two strings, great. But the minute that you feel that tension, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Shake it out, get rid of it. I, I can't overstress. This is the most fundamental thing that will help you in the long term. Okay, yeah? Okay. We can do this. <laughs> I hope I have enough long term. <laughs> we can do this. You do. It will, you will be amazed if like, you follow the fundamentals, how fast things will come. Okay? It just won't seem like it at the beginning. So, um, that is it. If you do have questions, you have my email. Don't flounder. Contact me. Yeah? You wasting your time wastes my time. Does, you, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? And we will talk about the next time that we'll meet, because uh, I'm going to be away on vacation. Um, uh, do Thursdays work as well as Tuesdays in general? Yeah. You're away next week. I'm away next week and probably the following. Um, I may try and do a makeup on like Saturday, uh, but I will be in touch about that. Unless Nancy wants to meet you at something like that. But I will let you figure that out amongst yourselves. Okay? Thank you. You're most welcome. Sorry, it's a lot to learn.
before we get to do the fun stuff. <laughs> but that's life, right? I was thinking it was just a quick snippet of something you shoot for. I would wait. I would wait. Okay. You can you can go play on. you can play for us while we while we go out, but I would that's what I, was gonna do. I would let their brains I'm not saying it. Okay. I'm here to listen. <laughs> and it is okay if your takeaway from this lesson today is, hey, you know what? I want to learn ukulele, not guitar. <laughs> That's acceptable too. Okay.